This is uh, quite a hot area in cardio-oncology at the moment. Uh, checkpoint inhibitors similar to CAR T cell therapy, uh, extremely uh, increased use now, more widespread use now in a number of cancers. And the number of patients who develop cardiac uh, side effects is probably increasing. Um, the number of patients with severe side effects and, and death is maybe uh, low of the order of maybe 1 to 1.5%, but the number of patients who have some form of cardiotoxicity or troponin rise, um, I think is uh, significantly more, more than that. Now, what we would like to do, of course, as with any type of toxicity or side effect, is a, be able to detect that early and also have a marker, you know, biomarker, which will tell us, you know, are our treatments uh, treating the toxicity working? Are they not working? And um, at the moment, as things stand, the uh, only biomarker we have really in this space is troponin. And there is some degree of uh, cross-reactivity depending upon whether you're using troponin I or troponin T. And these are some of the issues that we tried to bring about in the uh, paper that we wrote. The additional um, uh, part of the paper is also talking about the frequency of monitoring and uh, how intensely we should be uh, monitoring these biomarkers before treatment, during treatment, and after treatment. The ESC guidelines on cardio-oncology, which came out uh, two years ago, uh, went for a very high intense monitoring approach. Now, we appreciate that that may not be practical in all patients because um, it's maybe easy to say, you know, do these blood tests when they come for their oncology blood test, but, you know, who will be looking at the result? Who will be interpreting the result? Um, oncologists are, are not trained specifically to be interpreting these cardiac biomarkers. So that is uh, definitely an area for current and ongoing debate. And that's uh, another uh, point that we touched upon in the paper that we wrote.